All right, man, we're, we're live with our drill Holmes Jr. What's going on, man? How are you? Oh, uh, man, good, good. Just enjoying myself. Yeah, I'm man. To back to it already. I hear that. So um, we're just going to be doing a little interview with you. Our drill Holmes Jr., 12 and 0, 5 KOs. Is that right? Yep, yep. For sure, for sure. Yeah, man, super welterweight, 27 years old, out of Flint, Michigan, a 6'2", with a 74 and a half inch arm reach. Um, so the last uh, last time that we saw him was in 2019 um, when he had three fights and he had a KO over Jose Abreu. But in 2016, he had four fights, one fight in 2017, three fights in 2018, and then three fights in 2019. He just, if you, if you were tuning in, he was able to be on Showtime Boxing where he was able to have a unanimous decision victory over Vernon Brown. So uh, with that being said, man, hey, I want you to go ahead and introduce yourself to the fans and, and you know, let's go ahead and get into this interview. Uh, man, Ardra Home, Ardra Bossman Home Jr. out of Flint, Michigan. You know, so um, just be on the lookout for me, you know. How did you get into boxing and where did it all start? Um, I got three uncles. They are like seven, eight, nine, ten years older than me. And um, I used to always see them, you know, when I go to my grandma's house, I used to always see them coming back with their boxing trophies, you know, telling all the boxing stories, stuff like that. So I just wanted to get into it. I got into it when I was like 11. I, you know, I just wanted to be a kid. It was it was too tough of a sport for me back then. I was right. being beat up by all the uh, by all the open kids. So I stopped boxing after like like close to a year. Stopped boxing. So um, I came back down to the gym, but you know I was down there just playing basketball. And um, I went and visited the old team, and I was just telling my coach, I'm just playing with him though. I'm like, uh, you know, I'm gonna start back training. This that, and the third. He like, uh, and them boys gonna make you quit again. <laughs> so when you, when you said that, it just sparked. I said, All right, I'm, about to, I'm about to come, I'm about to beat up everybody, and I'm about to stay at it. I've been at it, I've been at it since, since I was like 15, so I've been at it 12 years now. Hey man, this was up. That's crazy. So, um, like, who right now is on your actual fight team? Like, your trainers, promoters, like, who are some of the people that's that's holding you down on your team? Uh, my trainer is uh, Jason Crutchfield out of Flint, Michigan. And um, my uh, my manager is David McWater, Split T Management, and my promoter is Lou DiBella. Nice man. Yeah, I saw that you just um, inked that deal with Lou DiBella. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Now I've, I've been with him for some. I've been with him. I've been with Lou for like uh, like four or five fights. But you know the the pandemic just slowed everything down. Okay. I like when I signed with him, the 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 story got kind of like. We got through under the bus. Like we went to New York. We was gonna do like a like a big press release, all that, but it got thrown under the bus by um I think Sean Porter and Danny Garcia was fighting or something like that. Right. Know, huh? Some 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 fight kind of like they just they just threw our little story right under the bus. So yeah. But yeah, I've been with them for a couple of years though. Okay. Yeah, I didn't see I didn't see nothing about it. I was like, okay. That yeah, was man, we were, we, were, we were sick about that. <laughs> Got you on that. Well, so um, when it comes to, I guess your your boxing style, like describe to me your your boxing style and just in general. Um, man, it it kind of just d depends on how I, how I feel, mm -hmm. and depends on uh, what my coach um, tell me we can get, and you know we really go from there. But you know, um, I, I use my jab all night. Um, I kind of I like using my right hook a lot. Um, yeah. And then you know, if my left, you know, I, I injure my left, but you know, that's that's my favorite punch. The left, the favorite shot is the straight left hand or the right hook to the body. But you know, just um, consider myself like a boxer puncher and um, like a like a pop shotter, I believe. Hmm. What, what do you think is your best weight division, like in your opinion? Um, 154. Like I'm, I'm really like a natural 154. Man, I, I um, I walked in the ring. I was 157. Like, it was crazy. I ain't never That's been awesome. that small walking into the ring. But um, 
because like usually I walk around like at 165, but like you know when I get into like serious training, uh, I get to walk around like at 160. So right. yeah. so um, it just depends on how how do you, I'm gonna say how these next three fights go. I might be going to 47. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, that's a I mean that's a pretty hot division right now. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'll say about the next three more fights. We, we you know that's gonna let us know if we want to stay at fifty four or go down. Hmm. You, know, but, you know. Okay. All right. Well, that's that's some that's some pretty big news. So I mean, down in down in the welterweight division, like who would you want to fight? I haven't really been paying attention okay. uh, to the world to the welterweight division actually, but um, everybody doing their thing though. Yeah. You, want, you really want to fight anybody who, you know, who got a belt, for real. But, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But it's going to be hard to kind of, like, just walk away from... I've been at 54, like, my whole career. I fought 152 in the amateurs my whole career, so it's going to be kind of hard to just walk away from the division and go down. But, man, right. we, we going to... Like I said, the next three fights going to determine what we're going to do. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. But, I mean... um Tell us about your your last fight and what was the game plan leading up to the fight. Uh, the game plan leading up to the fight was really just to use use our jab and um, put together combinations. But you know, um, when we got in there, I used you know I used a ring, used a jab, but I was like, man, the, the altitude really got to me. So I was like, okay, I gotta I gotta sit down. I'm about to just take the fights in, you know. All right. I know, then it's, I've been off two and a half years. I'm, I'm not going to be running around this ring. So, so we're going to just take the fight to him. And then us taking the fight to him, we, we smothered his his best punches, his right hook. Like, a lot of guys don't expect me to to know how to, you know, um, operate on the inside. But I've been doing it, like, my whole career, you know, my whole life. I always, you know, everybody, like, when they see me, put the pressure on them. So you got to learn how to fight under that pressure. So I was able to, you know, walk him back and beat him at his own game. <laughs> That's on that. So during the fight, you know, just talk me through how it was during the actual fight. Like, you know, what was there any type of adversity that you that you actually experienced, or was there some things that you you weren't expecting from from Brown, or or was everything sort of according to plan? I think everything was according to plan. Um, he, I think he was everything we thought he was gonna be. Like hmm. dudes with, with with that height and, and that that body frame, strong as hell. So we, right. we you know. I was looking, I was like, his, his go-to punch is the right hook. So I was like, we take that away from him, you know, the fight in the back. Mm. And um, and he also had got a good left hand. I was damn shocked. He caught me with a real good left hand. I said, damn, I ain't seen, I ain't seen this on the film. So yeah. That was, that was a shocker. He caught me with a, with a mean left hand, I think, like the seven, eight round. And um, oh, yeah, though. He's a, he, he a pretty good fighter. I'll take my hat off to him. All respect. And I, that, he a warrior for sure. Sure on that. So, um, how did you feel after the fight, and then what adjustments did you you think you you need to make going forward? Um, just move my head more, you know, using my range more. But like I said, um, I kind of felt him getting tired. Like in the third round, I felt like um, I felt like some of the steam came off his punches. So I'm like, okay, if I just push forward on him, uh, I think I can get him out of here. You know what I mean? Right. But he had he had more like I said he a warrior he had more in the tank than we thought he had. Hmm. Like so, what what you got coming up next for you? Like you know what type of fighters are you you looking at? I, I saw a few fighters that would be interesting like um, Ted Chessman or Cheesman, and then Kieran Conway could be s- some stuff that that could be working for you. I, I was looking at that for the that division. I don't know who who are some fighters that you would want to see. Um, all of them. It's kind of like, um, you know, like when you, I only got 12 fights, so I don't feel like I earned the right to start just calling, I'm gonna fight this dude, I'm gonna fight that dude. You gotta really prove yourself, you know what I'm saying? Right. You gotta prove yourself if you get to calling the guys out. But who okay. else I do wanna whoop, I don't know Paul Crow last. He was talking crazy. <laughs> uh, we, we fought in the amateurs, so I, I, I feel like he felt like he didn't win the fights. Cause if you beat my amateurs, why would you call him out in the pros? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like he got something right. more to prove. I, like, uh, I felt like shit during the fight. I ain't make no excuses. I just took the loss. You know, went on about it. Cause like we fought in the trials, 
And once you win the winner's bracket in the trials, you get two days off and watch everybody else fight. So that kind of like turned my motor off. You know what I mean? I was starving mm -hmm. myself. I started myself for two days trying to, because I was busting out the weight. I was laying there naked every day. So, right. You know, you know, at the end of the week, I felt like shit. But, uh, so that that's, he, he bumped into my team a couple months ago, talking about he would come to my backyard and we need this fight next, this, then, the third. So that's that's really like the only guy on my hit list for real. Oh, so you want to see him? Yeah, yeah, we got it. We got to run. When do you think that's gonna happen? Uh, man, I'm I'm a, uh, I'm gonna get on the phone with my team probably tomorrow. So, you know, <laughs> and I was actually supposed to fight him. I was supposed to fight him. Um, when he fought Taylor, I was yeah, to, I got I got the contract to that fight. I was supposed to be fighting him. I don't know what happened. Oh man, yeah, I got the contract to that fight. So I don't know what happened. He probably thought Taylor was gonna you know be an easier fight, and they went with that. Or, or, but you know, man, business is business. So you know, I don't, I don't know what happened with that business or who Taylor connected to. But I just know I was getting ready for the fight like three weeks before the fight. They like shit. He fighting Taylor. I'm like, what? So that's crazy. Man. Yeah, that's boxing for you. Yeah, I, I, um, I did a fight reaction on that Marquise Taylor Crow fight. And and I actually had Marquise Taylor win that fight. Matter of fact, I think Showtime had him win every round except for one, but they called it a draw. So you know, yeah. I, I made sure to put that picture out there. You know, so that was sort of crazy. I seen I seen that. I seen you oh, did yeah. that. Yeah, yep, yep. I yeah. seen that. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I didn't I didn't get to watch the whole fight myself. I just seen a little highlight. But, you know, usually when the boxing world saying something like everybody in the boxing world like it's pretty much true. I oh, know. I said, especially when you got guys who's been in the sport for years and they commentating the fight, and they even say like, you know, the fight was a, the wrong guy. You know, it was it was a bad decision. So you know, yeah, something something went right about it. I don't know. They they trying to make him the next best Olympian from Philly. Right. Bro. It's, I, I, I got something for him though. <laughs> so who's the best in the super welterweight division? Like who's actually the best? Charlo, for sure. I'll take yeah. it out to Charlo. He's been doing his thing. He getting rid of guys. It's Charlo for guarantee. So what what is it gonna take for Andrea Holmes to to be in the ring? Uh just just keep, you know, just keep trying to learn every fight. I'm trying to grow every fight. You know. So, you know, just making sure I um I, I take something away from every fight and and you know, just don't settle. Try to look better every fight. So so, you know, so I'm on the right track. You're just going to keep picking it up, picking it up. Yeah, man. You're a humble dude, man. I can, I, I definitely appreciate, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, you, through the whole interview, you never were like, hey, going outside of yourself. You always were just sort of into, you know, focused on what you're doing and what you're trying to do. So, um, and then not really focus on too many other things outside of that. So, appreciate you, bro. Yeah, big ups to you on that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So um, last last thing with this interview, you know, what are some parting statements that you got for your fans? What are some things that you want them to know? And then I'll um, let you have the, the closing words. Um, not really, man. Just just um, just stay tuned, stay stay posted, and you know, um, every time I step out, I'm try to do my best to you know do better. You know what I mean? The um, the pandemic been kind of like a like a gift and a curse. Like, you know, like when, like, when, like when you're sitting at home that long, you, you realize you take for granted a lot of the stuff. Like, like you're having the promotional team behind you, a management team, and you know what I'm saying? And and when people pay, when people pay, even, you know, paying um, for showtime for the month or, or, or buying tickets, they want they expect to see a good fight. You know what I'm saying? So right. I'm, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm gonna try to do. I'm gonna try to get the fans a good fight every time. Damn. Yeah, yeah, so, man. Stay, stay tuned, man. So, God willing, as you know, I stay at it, I stay focused, and you know, keep doing what I'm doing. I'm, um, I plan on having a title at least in the next three years, at least. You know, I'm gonna say realistically. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's, I'm gonna be the next. Realistically, I gotta, you know what I'm saying? I gotta, I gotta walk the path, you know, and keep proving myself. So, I plan on All having right. a title by at least thirty. Yeah, yeah. yeah man. I can tell, man, you're all about work. So, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. I got you, man. Yeah, man. Well, hey, thank you so much for this opportunity for the interview. Man, you've been stand up from the start that I've I've met you in. And, uh, and then just everything that I've seen in the in the ring has just been awesome. And I really haven't seen nothing. The one thing about you is also I don't see nothing outside of the ring neither. You know what I'm saying? Nothing yeah. crazy. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, appreciate you. Yeah. Yeah, man. Just keep up what you're doing. And, you know, I, I, I expect to see some great things for you. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you, man. Yeah, man. With that being said, as always, peace, one love. We out of here. Appreciate you, bro.